in Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Right on our toll-free telephone number, you're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We are together again on the radio. This from the front page of none other than the Wall Street Journal. And I know that the Wall Street Journal is a little too sophisticated for many, not just listeners, many Americans. The stories are a little too long. So I won't bore you with the entire story, just enough of the story so that we can talk about it. Here it is. Front page, page A1 of the Wall Street Journal. Paulo Perez, a graphic artist, hasn't made payments in months on the $330,000 mortgage on his ranch house in La Puente, California. It fell to Citigroup Incorporated's mortgage servicing unit to decide what to do about that. After Citigroup moved to foreclose on him, Mr. Perez, who is 28 years old, asked the financial giant to cut his monthly payments to a level he could afford. Citigroup representatives eventually said no, offering him a much less appealing suggestion. Sell your house. Turn over the proceeds. And we won't go after you for any unpaid balance. By the way, can I tell you something? That's fair. That is fair, Paulo. Because you bought a house you couldn't afford. And Citigroup said, all right, we won't sue you. We won't force you to file for bankruptcy. Sell the house. Get what you can get for it. Give it to us. And then we'll wash our hands of the whole thing. Says here in the Wall Street Journal, on the front lines of the great American mortgage workout. Tens of thousands of borrowers are in trouble and looking for relief. Washington has offered advice about what lenders should do. And influential groups that counsel low-income borrowers are ratcheting up pressure on Citigroup, which means, of course, Citibank, and others to offer struggling homeowners more favorable terms on their existing loans, even borrowers whose finances seem hopeless. Why should Citigroup pay any attention to them? The people who can't pay their mortgages are people who bought houses they couldn't afford. They had no business buying houses with no money down. They had no business buying houses with a half a percent teaser rate. They had no business buying houses with no uh, insurance. They had no business buying houses where five years from the time they bought the house, the uh, the the p- payments could ratchet up to a point that they couldn't afford to make the payments. Uh, in fact, they could afford them less than they could the day they bought the house. These are people who had no business buying houses. 
I moved to Los Angeles in 1988 to take my first Southern California radio job. That'll be 20 years ago in a few months. And even though I worked in the radio business and had a prominent job when I got here, I looked at my finances. I looked at what I could and could not afford. I looked at the cost of real estate in Southern California. And despite my, at the time, six-figure income, I decided that I couldn't afford to buy a house. And so I didn't. I didn't buy one in 1988, 1989, 1990, 1991, 1992, 1993, 1994, 1995, or 1996. I waited nine years after arriving in Southern California at age 41 to finally buy a house. And when I bought it, I bought a house that was less than the mortgage company said they would lend me, less than I could afford. I was able to afford a 20% down payment, proper homeowner's insurance, flood insurance, fire insurance, earthquake insurance, and I was able to maintain the home. I could financially afford it in every way, but it took nine years of saving and preparing. I was not able to own a house in Southern California until I was 41 years old. Now, you could say to yourself, well, that's ridiculous. That means the real estate is too expensive. Well, maybe real estate is expensive in Southern California. But I learned growing up poor that you just simply don't buy things you can't afford. And you don't buy things on credit that you can't pay back. It's wrong. It's not only illegal to borrow money you have no ability or intention to pay back. It's immoral. So when Citibank or any other lender says, folks... We're not cutting your payments so you can afford them. You agreed to this. They're right. They're right to do it. Many people out there listening to me right now over the last 10 years have bought houses they cannot afford. And especially since interest rates began being cut right after 9-11. You are the people who caused the crisis we have today, the one we read about all the time. It's you, those of you who bought houses with no down payment, those of you who bought negative uh, houses with negative amortization mortgages, those of you who made purchases of property and, and, and got mortgages you did not understand or just simply chose not to pay any attention to until they would readjust in five years when the adjustable rates would adjust upward. And by the way, adjustable rate mortgages, as people who own homes know all too well, you have a low rate for the first five years, then it adjusts upward, and you hope at the time it adjusts upward you can refinance. But interest rates between 2001 and 2003 were cut to such a low level you couldn't reasonably expect them not to go back up to where they were. You couldn't. And if you didn't understand, you know what? Tough. Life's not fair. And if you didn't choose to educate yourself, if you didn't choose to learn how the system works, then you deserve to lose your house. I'm sorry, you deserve to lose your house. Not everybody can afford to own a house. I, for one, grew up for much of my life in an apartment in the Bronx. We could not afford a house. When I was born, my dad made the then minimum wage of $1 an hour. That's $40 a week. And our rent was $80 a month. So half of my dad's income went to paying rent. We couldn't afford to buy a house. 
And my dad had no business buying a house at that time, and he didn't. One of the rare financial moves my dad did right, because believe me, I learned most of what I know by watching him do things wrong. If you can't afford something, or you can't afford to pay the bank or the mortgage company or the credit card back for whatever it is you borrowed, you have no right buying it. And these people, and we see all these boo-hoo-hoo stories, oh my goodness, it's the holidays and these people are losing their home, oh how sad this is. There's nothing sad about it. The only sad thing about it is that these people are a bunch of idiots, a bunch of morons, a bunch of lazy people who had no interest in understanding what it was they were getting themselves into. Buying a house, if you're planning on living at it, and let me tell you, because I've owned several, Buying a house, if you're planning on living in it, is not what they call a good investment. It's not a bad investment in that you get to, the, the benefit you get is living in the house, enjoying your time in the house, enjoying the ability to do in your home what you want to do without having to check with the landlord or somebody else. That is what you get. That's the profit you get. And even if you get a capital gain when you sell your house, how much of that did you put into insurance and property taxes and maintenance and repairs? You're not going to get rich buying your residence and living in it. It enriches your life only. And if you're stupid enough to buy a house when house prices are at an all-time high, and then getting a mortgage you don't understand and put absolutely no money into the house. You buy the house with no money down or little money down. Or if you're stupid enough to believe that a loan that doesn't ask you how much money you make, no income verification loans, if you're stupid enough to get a loan like that, you deserve what's coming to you. And I hate to say it, but if you find yourself out on your ass Christmas Day, you did it to yourself. It's your own fault. Anybody who can't pay for their house should get kicked out. Unless there's some demonstrable issue of fraud. If you can prove that Citibank or Wells Fargo defrauded you, rather than that you were too lazy or stupid to learn the terms of the loan, fine. Go ahead. Sue them. But the vast majority of you, that's not the case, especially these big banks. They're not stupid. You're stupid, okay? If you took out a loan where you didn't understand the terms, whose fault is that? Let's take the simplest example of this. How many of you go out and get a Visa card or a MasterCard, and they send you those those little booklets with paragraphs and paragraphs dense with verbiage with all these explanations of how they calculate your interest rate and uh, what kind of fees they charge if you pay late and things like that. And I'm willing to bet that I'm talking to you, Bunko. I, 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 I'm willing to bet you never bothered to read the fine print. And then when you got assessed a $59 late fee or when you went over your credit limit and they charged you 50 bucks or whatever, you were indignant. Well, you're just an idiot. And I don't feel sorry for idiots. And I don't feel sorry for people too lazy to learn and understand what it is they're doing. And if you're too much of a lazy idiot to learn what the terms are of your mortgage or to spend $150 taking it to an attorney, you're getting exactly what you deserve if you get kicked out of your home. And I don't think any pressure groups should have any impact on Citibank or Countrywide or Wells Fargo or anybody. And you had every right not to take that loan. There was no re requirement to buy a house that you couldn't afford. No requirement to take out a loan you didn't understand. You were the idiot. You deserve to be living on the street. Don't ya? Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Man, you know, you need to exterminate this broad on the line, man, because all I'm hearing is, me, 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 me. Oh, we're on our show, man. She's the kind of chick that you talk about all the time, man. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom 
Tom like his show. At 1 800 5 800 Tom. Thank you for tuning in. Oh, yes, you've got pressure groups now trying to pressure Citibank's mortgage lending arm into lowering people's monthly payments to payments they can afford for their mortgages on houses they shouldn't have bought in the first place. I say, scroll. Shouldn't have bought a house if you couldn't afford it. Bottom line. Damn. On the Tom Likas show, hello. Yeah, you know, these mortgage companies aggressively targeted poor people. And um, I actually saw something on a national news with an interview with one of these people that are about to lose their house. And they were talking about how the salesman at the time, he almost he wanted to back out of the deal, but the salesman pressured him so much. And I've been in, so, you know, I was at a car dealership once where they put three guys in there and they were like almost threatening to not let me leave the room. If you can't afford to run mortgages and the paperwork that go with them past an attorney, you can't afford to buy a house. Well, yeah, but these uh, mortgage companies, um, were they they were offering loans without any uh, background check? Or what were you saying before that there was uh, no there was some requirement that they weren't having? Yeah, I mean, no, you offered, didn't know no income verification. But the point right, is, no income that does, it doesn't say. But that doesn't loan. say that doesn't say that you're not required to pay the loan back. Yeah, but if you're going to loan to somebody without verifying their income, then you're an idiot. So well, I have no sympathy for Countrywide or any of these companies. I have no, by the way, I have, no, no, sy- sympathy I have for- no sympathy if the company gets stuck with a piece of real estate because they had to foreclose, they had to kick somebody out, and they have to sell it uh, at a fire sale price. I have no sympathy for that. But I also have no sympathy for people who take out loans without the ability or the intention of paying them back. Well, when the loans that when the when the uh, companies initiate, you know the process. The c- companies initiate. People, companies initiate the process of every sale of every product and service there is. Look, yeah, but they went out after the. They went out aggressively. They, they have every right to do that. God bless America. They have every right to do that. And by the way, you're well, not required yeah, to right respond. To and you know what? You're not required to buy the house. Yeah, but you know what? But their sleazy business practices, they bought There's nothing sleazy control. about it. They have every right to do what they Target do, and and people. you, the consumer, have the responsibility to figure out what it is you're agreeing to do. And if you can't figure it out, it's your responsibility to take that paperwork to an attorney, have him read it to you, and explain it to you. Yeah, but you know... When you're in a room with one of these salesmen and they're pressuring you to sign and they're uh, again, okay. uh, well, it, it, look, they brought it on themselves. That's how cars they're are sold. People. That they is how cars themselves. are sold. That's how everything is sold. Timeshares? No, that's not how everything. What about timeshares? What about timeshares? What about timeshares? What about what about cars? Ever go to a car dealer and they say, "Well, sit yeah, in my I, office yeah, here and I'll exactly. go, I'll I go did. to the manager and see what we can do." That's how it's done. God bless America. That's how you sell. You don't have to buy anything someone is selling you ever. Yeah, but when they, you know they went on target, they went out looking for these poor people. That's fine. They deliberately, you know, they get what they deserve. They go out there, they're trying to scam the poor people. Hey, you know, they... Um, I get, I don't, uh, yeah. the part I don't disagree with you on is if uh, a mortgage company pressures somebody into signing up for a loan they can't afford to make the payments on without explaining it to them, and then they can't make the payments and they get stuck foreclosing on the house and having to repossess that house, and then they have to sell the house for less than the mortgage is worth, I don't feel sorry for the bank or the mortgage company. I don't. But I also don't feel sorry for the loser who went out and bought something he couldn't understand or couldn't afford and then whines to the TV cameras when he's forced to live up to his responsibility, which is to pay his debts. Well, all I can say is there's blame. There's equal blame on both sides. It's not just the people that but are... But the point is, if you do, I don't care how blame. it got sold. If you can't pay for something you bought, you shouldn't be able to keep it. Well, yeah, of course, that's going to happen. But now these companies, you know, they're all like uh, going bankrupt and laying off thousands of people. And it's like, hey, they brought that part of that. I again, and by the way, I don't disagree with that. You're absolutely right about well, that. If you go out and target you're, a segment of the population that's not very likely to be able to pay back their loan, 
then you know where's the brains there? I mean, you're absolutely. Uh, by the way, I don't. Go out and I don't. I don't argue. disagree. And by the way, it has. It's not brains. It's greed. And I that part I agree with you on. But I will I never agree with you that people who buy something don't have a responsibility to pay for it. Ever. I never said that. I'm just saying the, the blame is equal on both sides. Well, but the point is, the bottom line here is, even if somebody gives you a shady deal to buy something, you're not required to buy it. Yeah, but it, um, at, at the same time, though, if, uh, you know, it's really, the, the, in fact, the segment I saw was on, um, they, they were adjusting the rates for some people. Uh, and, uh, uh, they're doing that right. because they're doing that because some companies have decided they're better off getting something for these houses than nothing. Yeah. And they're by the way, they're entitled to do that if that's what they choose to do. Hang on a second, Dan. But, you know, Let that's me get only half the story. That's only half the story when you're just trying to say, "Oh, these losers, these losers, these losers." Yeah, you they're know, losers. But, they're losers because yeah, just but the companies that went after them are you just know, like but, anybody who watches these TV commercials or infomercials late at night, telling you how to get into the real estate game for no money down, or telling you that you can own Bentleys and Rolls Royces, drive around. If you're stupid enough to order the DVDs or the CDs. You're stupid enough to believe that stuff. You deserve to lose your money. You deserve it. Yeah, well, when there's uh, the... Um Many of these houses were bought because of the greed of the buyer, thinking they were going to buy a house and flip it. And uh, they were taken advantage of by somebody even greedier than they really was. The company that used a predatory lending practice. Trying to flip it. Oh, God, let me tell you, many people were people were calling this show and saying that's what they were going to do. Well, that I don't know. Either way, the bottom line is to place all the blame and and to make the companies out to be like the heroes. I didn't say they're oh, heroes. I, they, by well, the way, the of your first segment. Companies are not. not companies are not. Poor Morgan. Com companies all these companies, companies are not heroes. heroes. Their job. Their job is to make as much money as they can for their shareholders without breaking the law. And unless you can prove the law was broken, they have the right to target low income individuals. They have the right. To to target the mentally ill or whoever, they have the right to target anybody they damn well please. They have the right to do it, and we have the right to say no, not accepting well, your product. Have the right to do it, that doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. Hang on a second, Dan. Mark, what did you want to say here to Dan? Hey, how's it hanging, Tom? Uh, hanging right here, Dan. I'm uh, Mark. Well, I'm sorry. No, that's right. Uh, well, this guy sounds like one, actually one of the people that's in that situation. Um, nobody forced you to do anything, man. I'm in the, in the mortgage don't, industry. Don't make assumptions. You don't know what you're talking about. I am not one of the people in this. Well, oh, that, that's the entire thing. Oh. I said you sound like one. You sound like oh, one. Then I, I what I want to say is, look, nobody's forced you to do anything, okay? Before yeah, you sign over, every document, yeah, give, me chance, yeah, give yeah, me a chance to speak, though. Give me a chance to speak, though. Hold on. Listen, okay? If you want to learn and, and, and understand what's going on, Listen, okay? No, nobody told you to do anything. You're not under duress. I mean, you're not a, cr a criminal in an inter interrogation room um, being asked if you committed a crime or not. It, it, it's your choice. You can either say yes or no. Before you sign every paper, they go over it and they ask you if you understand it more than once before you sign it. Okay? People don't understand that the reason why mortgage companies went down is because in part due to customers not manning up and paying their bills. You have customers call in and saying, hey, uh, I'm sorry, I have my first payment due, but I went on vacation and I didn't make my mortgage payment. Uh, th the mortgage is the biggest investment you can have in your life. How are you going to go on vacation and not make your mortgage payment? And then people think that you know mortgage interests are making all kinds of money. A lot of mortgages went, went out of business, a lot of mortgage companies. And that's because the delinquencies uh, contributed to that. Customers That's because they offered loans without verifying the income first? That's stupid. Companies that deliver loans. Companies that deliver loans. Companies that deliver loans. Companies that deliver loans. There's going to be a few loan officers. Just, there's, there's bad apples in every tree. There's going to be a few loan yeah, officers. There's a lot of bad apples in every tree. I'm not saying that, that, that that's not out there. That is out there, but for the most part, it's, it's, that's not the case. The case a lot of people all they wanted to do was just have the dream house that they've always wanted. Okay, they didn't care about how they were going to make their payments in the future. They didn't, like, look at the fact that it was everybody's a, mind, right? No, but I'm just saying it's a, it's a two-year uh, two year fixed rate, and they think it's a 30-year fixed rate. They don't care to well, look at the, the, the problem. At the they contract. were not fixed rates. That was the problem. They were not fixed rates. They started out that's, with one That's my whole point, but they don't care about 400%.
Most customers don't t- they don't tell the customers it's a fixed rate for 30 years. Customers think it's a fixed rate for 30 years. Now, I'm yeah, negative right. amortization. Yeah, negative you amortization. Me, I don't understand the issue. You have you mortgages that amortize for 30 not. years, and they think it's a 30-year mortgage. I mean, a 40-year mortgage and a 30-year mortgage. They don't understand balloon loans. The, the loan officers and the title companies explain this to the customers. And the customers don't hear that. All they hear is, I got a house. Okay, and they don't realize that you know, taxes, insurance is included. Taxes, they believe it's a fixed. Taxes are adjustable. They go up and down. I mean, that that does not control by the mortgage companies. That's controlled by the by the city, the county, the government, the insurance company. That fluctuates. It doesn't stay fixed. They don't understand that that's aside from the principal and interest. Okay, now you 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 understand mortgage companies don't like foreclosures. Because they lose money in foreclosures. They lose about 50 to 75% of, the, of what they were supposed to get in foreclosures. Now, most of the people that right now are up in roar is because they hear all this news uh, on, on TV saying, oh, you know, call your mortgage company and you yeah, can get modification. You're repeating yourself now, okay? You're I'm repeating sorry? yourself. Look, if you no, offer I'm saying because I'm, I'm telling you, I'm in the industry. Pay. That's why I hear the customers call in and say, you offer oh, you a loan what? without because income verification. What does that have to do you with having common sense people. and reading? What does that have to do with having common sense and reading what you sign? Whether you're signing a cell phone contract or you're signing right. a mortgage company contract, yeah. I, you're not gonna read. If you if you understand that, then the most intelligent thing would, that you you would do would be getting somebody before you sign something to understand what it is that you're signing. I mean, you're an idiot if you sign something. Like I said, the biggest the biggest investment you're gonna have in your life. And you're not gonna. You're gonna sign something right, you don't understand. Right, right, I've heard that already. Okay, now will you let me talk? Well, you've been you sound you sound like like a for five you sound minutes. Like a customer, because you're, you're not. You're, you're trying to ignore that fact. You're trying you're to ignore that fact. Yourself, but you can't. You can't ignore that fact. You you're can't ignore it. Yourself, People right? want no modifications now nowadays, which is fine. But they don't understand that that's something you qualify for. You can't request it. You have to qualify for it. And that's basically designed. For customers that are extremely yeah, delinquent, the there's, some people, like there's some people that have their loans adjusted. There's some people that have loans adjusted right now, and they're current in their payments, and they want a loan modification. It's not that easy to get a loan modification. Are you done yet? Can I, I talk? Understand. I mean, that, but did you understand that you first can I have to respond before you sign them? Can did I you understand respond? that? Did you understand can I respond? that? Well, fine. Go ahead. Can I respond? Are you going to stop? Okay, go, go ahead. I'm what kind of a company asks for? What kind of a company offers loans without income verification? They knew these companies knew these people had financial problems. They took a risk and they lost. I, I, you know, there's two sides of the story. Yeah, some people were irresponsible, but the companies were irresponsible in targeting people that they knew were poor risks. And so, so that yeah. So the bottom line is, life. if the company loses right. out, if the company loses out, I don't feel sorry for them. But what I have a problem with are all these weepy stories on TV about these poor losers who are going to get kicked out of their house before Christmas. Boo, freaking who? You know, these people shouldn't have bought houses they couldn't afford. Bottom line, no matter who they bought them from. Well, uh, whatever. I mean, I uh, know. All I'm saying is, there's two sides of the story. I mean. The way you're presenting it is that it's all the fault of the people who took No, it's loan. not. No, 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 no. You're giving me wrong. Unethical, listen, listen, like unethical said, lenders. Listen, there, there is that apple in every tree, but that, you're acting like that's the general case. That's not the case in every single uh, situation. In yes, in occasions. Location, yes, in okay. Listen, let, listen. The reason it became a yes. crisis, they went out and deliberately targeted poor people. You know what I said? Everybody, work. look, everybody knows their own financial situation, okay? You make your decisions as an adult. Okay, if you decide and you normally sign a paper knowing that you can't afford it, it's your bad. It's nobody's bad. It's not the loan officer. Nobody grabbed that pen and put a gun to your all head. I'm saying is, all I'm saying is these loan companies are also getting what they deserve. They put out high risk. They went into a high risk venture. They decided let's exploit poor people and let's you know let's try to get money out of you know and they didn't even verify income. So you know they got what they deserve too. Now, you see, so, so just, you, you, you sound like you're, all the, you're, you're regurgitating everything you hear on TV. That's what you're doing. You're not really educated in the industry, honestly. You're just you're regurgitating you're, everything you hear on TV. You don't know. You don't know. Like, don't you know, know, know I'm done talking me. to the city. Can you blow me up? You don't know me. <laughs> uh, yes, I can blow you up. Here you go. Are you ready? Now, we also have here on the line uh, for Dan, uh, we've got Paul 
And, uh, Paul, you're on the Tom Likas show. What did, uh, line are you on there? Oh, line eight. There you go. Uh, what did you want to say here to Dan? Hey, John, we're shaking. You know, this guy, Dan, sounds like a typical subprimer boo who can't afford my house. Help me no, out. No, I don't have fault. one. I rent an apartment, idiot. I, you it's, don't know nothing uh, about You know, that's I'm fine, buddy. Here. Look, it's nobody's here. fault <laughs> you can't afford your own house. I'm not with you retards. Oh, look at that. And spend every dime you have. If you buy things with it that you can't afford, you shouldn't have it. If you, Bottom uh, if line. You, By the way, know. what I'd like to have asked Dan is, oh, you live in an apartment. Why didn't you buy a house? Yeah, no kidding. Oh, because you can't afford it. Oh. So what about these other losers? Yeah, you know what? You know, he kept saying that uh, the mortgage companies were going after the poor people and trying to exploit poor people. That's part of the dumbest thing I've ever heard. If I'm a mortgage company, why would I purposely go for a person who I know is not going to make payments? Do I want to lose money and go out of business? No, it's just a gamble that they took. They said, let's do no verification of income. We'll do high loan volume, get as many as we can get done, and maybe we'll lose a couple. But the gamble they took was too large. Now they're losing more than they thought they would, and that's the problem. And I, feel and I don't no feel sorry for them either. I feel oh. no sorry for any of the greedy people who got involved in this. But the people getting thrown out of their homes were just as greedy as the people who tried to get mortgages uh, done where people couldn't afford to pay them. No, oh, most definitely. I mean, I could probably go out and uh, purchase the most expensive uh, Mercedes on a credit line right now and uh, probably default on the payments, but whose fault is that? I mean, then you go on TV, they're taking my car! Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, it's ridiculous, Tom. Flush me out of here. I'm sick of it. All right, I'm going to flush you. Here you go, Paul. <laughs> Tom. 1-800-5800-866. I think I must do penance tonight for talking to you today because years ago I thought you were the seat of Satan and, uh, and I've come around. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number in case you're just tuning in. Front page of the Wall Street Journal, big story that Citigroup, the parent company of Citibank, is feeling pressure from community pressure groups to lower people's mortgage payments to what they can afford. Because they bought houses they couldn't afford, and the mortgages are readjusting, as called for in the contracts these people signed. And I say, hey, you shouldn't have bought a house if you couldn't afford to buy a house. It's just that simple. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Eddie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How are you, Tom? Great. Great. You know what? I was calling in because I'm in the business. And uh, you know what? I appreciate everything you're doing as far as letting people know they probably shouldn't be buying homes that they can't afford. But it's probably a good idea to tell them that Jerry Buss, a lot of other wealthy people made their fortune in real estate. Yeah, and? And maybe you should encourage those to learn from their mistakes, but probably pursue it if they want, a, if they want fortune. But the, the, the problem is these are not investors trying to make a fortune. These are people who wanted to get out of their apartment, wanted to get out of living in the backseat of their car or whatever, and they wanted to buy a house, something they could not afford. Well, that's probably they couldn't afford it at the time, and maybe they did, they couldn't afford it now. But I'm sure Jerry Buss didn't start buying 10 homes at a time. I'm sure. Well, uh, Jerry Buss, Jerry Buss was also, he, he's Dr. Jerry Buss. Never forget that. You're right, Dr. Jerry Buss. And, and, and Dr. Jerry Buss had the money to invest in real estate. Okay, but there's been... Where mechanic Joe Blow, who's getting thrown out of his house before Christmas, maybe he couldn't afford the house. Okay, well, I hope he learns from it, and now he can start buying one home at a time and then grow his fortune. Uh, maybe you shouldn't be buying homes at all. Well, if you're guiding them towards uh, negativity, yeah, but if you want somebody to just look, the American dream, buy a home and make sure you can afford it, then pursue it into a, turn it into a fortune. Everybody wants to be... You know, have wealth in their life, I'm sure. Well, they may want to have wealth in their lives, but the way to have wealth in your life, first and foremost, is not to buy things you can't afford. Absolutely. But knowing that they've learned from it, 
Now they can pursue it and start the force. Uh, you know what? If these people had learned from it, they wouldn't be whining on television. Oh, boo, hoo, hoo. Or on the radio, but now that we have people like myself on the radio saying, look, it's okay, you can learn. And it's a hard lesson sometimes for some people worse than others, but you have to start the process. You got to stop, start stop, Trump. stop having uh, protest groups to, to force, try to force the banks and the mortgage companies into lowering people's payments, payments they agreed to legally. That's true. But uh, that's not my argument. My argument is you, to, in order to get wealth, you have to buy homes. Make sure you can afford it. Just move forward. In order to buy homes, you need to have cash, Shola. And anybody who tells you that you can buy a house with no money down is just a blatant, bald-faced liar. Or accessible to those type of programs that have uh, those type of uh, loan scenarios. People available. who have that kind of access have wealth already. Well, when you're saying that I'm a liar or anybody who's in the business saying that we can offer these programs at zero down, that's not true. At one point, we did offer those programs because it was... You possible. offer them, but people who can't afford to buy houses can't afford to be buying them that way. Tom, you're changing your argument every time. You're telling me we can't get something with zero down, and now you're telling you're changing your... Oh, well, I'm not saying the whole plenty of people are offering zero down mortgages. How many of those people are getting thrown out of their houses now? I'm sure the statistics are in front of your desk, but what I'm saying is you we know, have the, you first know one, the we're statistics. not liars. Number one, we're not liars because the programs that we had available with zero down were available. Now they're just they're fewer to come by, but some great programs are available with like three percent. People down. with wealth like myself, we don't buy houses with no money down. Okay, but unfortunately the majority of your listeners losers, are as as you are, losers, losers, losers buy homes with no money down. Or people who aren't as fortunate. Because uh, no, sure no, there's a lot of listening to our lawyers. Because, again, why, we, why you would assume I am fortunate is beyond me. Because right. I grew up as poor as anybody listening to this program. You know what, Tom, you're right, because you worked very hard for it. You worked very hard for it, and I'm, I'm not going to take that from you. But the majority, well, I'm going to say the majority, a lot of your listeners have uh, needed that 0% program in order to buy their home. A lot of them may be making their payments. And if they're they getting can. kicked out before Christmas, all I can say is ho, ho, ho. Well, that's on them, but it's not the end of the road. Luckily, they've uh, they've learned a lesson, I hope, and they can pursue buying other homes. Maybe if it's 0% down, as long as they found out the strategy and how to turn it into wealth instead of just getting uh, bummed out. And don't feel so bad when like it starts kicking your butt, even if you still decide to listen to them. Oh, Jesus Christ. And one of the no money down uh, uh, people calling in there makes his living selling with no money down. Amazing. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Barney on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Are you there, Barney? Go ahead. Yo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was holding for Tom. This is Tom. Oh, Tom. Hey, this is uh, Barney with downtown Los Angeles. Uh, I was I was calling because, geez, I was hearing these two guys earlier. I mean, go at it, talking about, you know, it's all, it, it's, uh, it's not lender's fault. It's not lender's fault. Well, let's, let's be realistic. I'm, you know, 24 years old. I own my own mortgage company. I mean, I think I think lenders have to take responsibility about, you know. Lenders are taking responsibility. There are many lenders who are uh, uh, foreclosing on uh, mortgages and foreclosing and uh, taking people's homes who then are stuck with real estate that's worth less than the mortgage is worth. And they are losing their shirts. And big companies like Goldman Sachs, and you see them on TV, countrywide, taking big write-downs because of this. So they are taking responsibility in the form of billions of dollars of write-downs. Well, no, what I mean is, is like a, 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 a big part of it has to do with, you know, these unscrupulous loan officers and, 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 and the way they – I mean, let's, let's, let's face it. These problems started happening two, three years ago. I mean, that's when – People were getting into two-year fixes, getting into three-year fixes, and not knowing because people weren't educated. Loan officers, Whose fault is it that they're not educated? It's 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 brokers' fault. It's no, people. it's not. No, it's not. I I, I got educated because I went out and read about mortgages, exactly. and it's the reason. It's no, the I, reason that I waited nine years after arriving in Southern California to buy my first house here. No, and you're absolutely right, Tom. See, the thing is that I agree with you on that end. See, because I myself educated myself about two or three years ago. Same thing. I've been in the business now for five years because I thought there's got to be more. i got to know more information. But there's a lot of people who are not like you and I. I mean, there's a lot of people who are just basically... And they deserve to get their ass kicked. Exactly. I agree. Big They time. deserve to be getting kicked out of their house, even if it's before Christmas. Boo freaking hoo. 
The Tom Likas Show.